Let me get on my album analysis shit. <clears throat> Summer Walker is a talented singer and songwriter who rose to fame off the back of her exceptional acoustic covers and popular R&B tracks. Her debut studio album, Over It, was released in October 2019 and got universal praise from critics, debuting at number two on the Billboard chart. Summer made history when this album dropped, earning the biggest streaming debut ever for female R&B artists, and now she's gearing up to drop her much-anticipated sophomore effort, Still Over It. Summer is one of the industry's most talented and bubbling stars. However, one doesn't make an impact on the scene like she did without racking up a controversial headline or two. Between her public spats with her ex-boyfriend and producer London on the track, to her polarizing burner account, there was a few things that people got on her about since the last time we made a video about Summer Walker. Summer's journey is an inspiring one, as just a few years ago, Summer was working on her hustle and was ultimately leading a different life from the girl that we see today. With Summer releasing her follow-up to her critically acclaimed album, Albums still over it, I figured why not take an updated look on Summer Walker's journey with fame on this brand new edition of Before They Were Famous. Summer Marjani Walker was born April 11th, 1996 in Atlanta, Georgia, growing up in a big family and having close relationships with her cousins, having lived with them for an earlier portion of her life. As you're able to probably tell from her music and public persona, Summer is an introvert, meaning that she likes to be alone and keep to herself. In fact, she's always been upfront about this. However, being a quiet, keep to yourself type person does not mean that Summer had nothing to say or express. While spending so much time in solitude, Summer confided in music. Like many of us do, but it didn't take long before Summer started coming up with her own songs and using that as her primary form of self-expression. It was how she got through things. She told Apple, I just have to do it. I actually don't have a choice. It's like I have to breathe. That's like my drug. I'm addicted to it. I never been a girl who writes in her diary, Pro Tool sessions are my diary sessions. That's why a lot of my songs are emotional. Summer cites Jimi Hendrix, Erica Badu, and Amy Winehouse as some of her main influences. Before making it big, Summer would play piano and acoustic covers of songs, often just in her bedroom or bathroom. It seems Summer saw the potential in herself as she told Billboard she did want to make money and live comfortably, and saw making music as a potential avenue to achieve this. Look, Summer's always been about her bag. This is especially evident when pictures surfaced, showing that before she blew up, Summer had her very own cleaning service that she ran all by herself. We love a good entrepreneur. The first cover that she posted to YouTube was in May of 2013 of an L. Varner song titled I Don't Care. The video that really blew her up was a video posted in 2017, which was a mashup of Drake's Fake Love, Ray Schremmer's Black Beetle, Beyonce's Yes, and Genuine's Pony all in one track. The video eventually accumulated 400,000 views. After that, most of her covers started getting a lot of views, and this is when Summer transitioned into making more original tracks. Like we previously established, Summer is about the bag, and right before she blew up, one of her side hustles was working at a strip club. She states that working there was a great form of therapy and still practices from time to time when she needs that dose of tranquility. Summer had all the makings of a star, and funny enough, her big break came off of the heels of being discovered by a woman who coincidentally had the exact same name as Summer Walker. I guess that's what happens when you Google your own name just to find another woman who makes amazing music. It's like we live in a simulation or something. So the agent known as Summer Walker worked with a record company by the name of Love Renaissance, also abbreviated as LVRN. And after a studio session with some people from the label, they signed a young Summer Walker, and this gave her the opportunity to truly hone her craft and put everything into her debut project, which she was already working on, titled Last Day of Summer. Summer released a track titled Session 32, which started generating her some buzz as an up-and-coming artist, as her sound truly stood out. But then she dropped her single, Girls Need Love, which caught everybody's attention including none other than the certified lover boy himself, Drizzy Drake. Now, apparently Drake said that he was at a bowling alley and saw Summer's video for Girls Need Love playing on the monitor, and Drake loved it so much that he DM'd her letting her know what he thought of the song. With a little bit of a push from her record label, Summer then asked Drake if he wanted to jump on the remix, and Drake was more than happy to do so, as Drake then recorded his own verse for the Girls Need Love remix, which in return saw the song reach the 37th spot on the Billboard charts. Summer was officially a star. The year 2019 was often an amazing start for 
the young songstress. Her last day of summer mixtape was a commercial and critical success. She got the full Drake feature package. Everybody wanted to work with her, and this left much anticipation for her debut studio album, Over It. You'll find that high expectations seem to be an overarching theme throughout Summer's career. More on that in a second, but first, in October 2019, Summer dropped her debut studio album, Over It, and ladies and gentlemen, this album is one of those albums. If you haven't, you need to go listen to it right now, but this is one of those undeniable Hall of Fame classic R&B projects. This project is the definition of a vibe. It sets a poignant, sultry mood, as majority of the production is handled by Summer's at the time boyfriend, London on the track. And you can really tell how much she loves him across the 18 tracks. However, Summer also takes you for a ride through her failed relationships and lets you know exactly why she is over these men, over the relationships, and over pretty much everything in life. I think it needs to be said though that even outside of this album and just in general, Summer's expression of romantic melancholy is articulated in such a dope way that you can be a whole ass grown man and still find the middle ground in Summer's music and subject matter. Like when she opens a song saying things like, my last dude was a bitch, or these self-reflective sensibilities saying, I might be a hoe too. I mean, you don't need to be a woman in summer situation to feel that or find somewhere in your life where you could relate to that sediment. If you like slow burning contemporary R&B, it's in there. If you like upbeat cuffing anthems, summer gets in that bag too. What I'm trying to say here, folks, Summer Walker's music can be enjoyed by everyone or at least anybody who has an ex. Soon after the release, Summer won the Soul Train Award for the best new artist and it was at this ceremony where people memed her to death for her brief acceptance speech and awkward photo up on the red carpet. People were really getting at Summer for the awkward way that she carried herself, and Summer opened up and addressed these comments people were making by explaining that she has bad social anxiety and doesn't exactly do well with big crowds and being around people she doesn't know. She also explained how this contributes to her onstage performance. Speaking on the award show and memes specifically, she said, I can't even accept an award in peace. You see how I spoke, I was scared. Everyone else gave a long ass speech, I didn't because I have social anxiety. Look, if you have any type of anxiety about anything at all, then this shouldn't be that hard to understand, especially with how mental health focused today's society is. However, some people just weren't buying it. Some people just couldn't fathom the fact that this woman was going through it. Wendy Williams being one of these people. Social anxiety, are these is this the outfit of a woman with social anxiety? Summer addressed Wendy and all the critics who claim or suggest that her social anxiety is all an act by saying, This is how people commit suicide, okay? When people tell you what's literally going on with them and then people still continue to bully them, like Wendy and P. Williams, that bad built. I don't even understand how she could ever look at how she looking. Let me stop. Along with the skepticism regarding her mental health, Summer was also getting hate from people online as footage from her shows and concert goers would make comments about Summer's onstage presence and her ability as a performer. Many said that she was boring and looked like she didn't want to be there. Joe Budden especially had a lot to say about this. Joe. No, I'm talking about her you, you are tapping just... her leg on Fallon like this. So, so what would you like to see Summer do? A dance, show, do a dance, good show. Dance, are you talking about dance? That would help. It almost seemed like everybody was coming at Summer's neck. She had already embarked on the first and last tour, which she headlined but canceled the remaining dates due to the overwhelming criticism that she was receiving. The conversation about Summer's stage presence reached its peak when she had the Toronto stop of her tour and apparently left fans waiting for hours outside. I personally think this is somewhat of a normal thing. Popular performers tend not to be super punctual people and it's usually not their fault, which was Summer's case. But what really set the good people of Toronto into an absolute frenzy was when she posted a picture with Drake backstage while fans were in line waiting. And boy, did they not take that kindly to this as people really went in on her on Twitter. And as a Toronto native myself, I can confirm that Toronto was indeed a war zone that day, but Summer eventually did perform and put on a good show. She even had to address all this in an IG rant by saying, By the time I get to the venue, I have 10 minutes to get my makeup done. I go on stage when I'm told to go on stage. I didn't know I was late. I didn't know if I was early. I didn't know anything. When they tell, when they come get me in my dressing room, that's when I get on stage. I was sitting in the back like a creep. Drake told me he was going to come to my show. I literally told him, don't even come while y'all are sitting around here thinking about, you just want to hang out with Drake. You want to hang out with Drake. I told the man, don't come. In 2020, Summer dropped an EP titled Life on Earth and also announced that her and London on the track were expecting by posting a photo of her baby bump. 
In March 2021, Summer had a baby girl and fans expressed how happy they were for Summer in London. Side note, this alternative cover of Over It 2 will always be one of the toughest pictures I've ever seen. However, Summer did receive some blowback when she posted about the diet that she feeds her child once she uploaded a picture of all the ingredients together. Some people even went as far to call CPS on Summer, saying that she is endangering her child by not feeding her enough. Yeah, fans can be pretty ruthless. Summer also received a considerable amount of backlash due to her comments regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, expressing skepticism about the whole thing, and it got worse when she posted a video to her burner account that falsely portrayed Asian people spreading viruses, and when the video shared actually turned out to be clearly misinformation, she doubled down by saying, it don't matter if it was from 20 years ago. Bottom line, that nasty, and I don't give a if a black, white, yellow, or green person did that sh it's still nasty. Summer was also slated to appear at the 2021 BET Awards, but was ultimately denied entry due to compliance with health and safety protocols. This was also the same day she announced her new album. So I decided to pull up anyway, and let you guys know something. Boy, did she look amazing announcing that new album. You don't need to include that. She did look good though. Summer Walker and her baby's father, London on the track, have had an interesting relationship to say the least, as there was apparently a constant conflict between Summer and London's two other baby mamas, Eric and Ebony. Things really hit the fan this past August as Summer went on a wild IG rant addressing the issues between her, London, Eric, and Ebony. Summer is basically saying that she tried to be cordial with Erica and Ebony, but they were the ones that didn't want to play nice, saying that they were upset over not being with London anymore. I'm like, shorty, I have no problem with you. I want to be good. Let's, you know, our kids, they can grow up together. Nah, bitch, nah, bitch, because you was my baby daddy. You still wanted to I don't want to any of you hoes. I don't get anything from this. Y'all do. Y'all cloud chasers. It was also during this rant that we got a handful of classic sound bites. Calling all hoes. One of y'all put that good thing on. Put that good thing. Put the put somebody please put that. Put that on him. Apparently, Summer also recorded a track titled Session 33, a follow-up to the previous song, Session 32, and recorded it the same day that she did this IG rant, so it'll be interesting to hear what comes of that track. London fired back in a few story posts denying all the claims Summer made, as well as Ebony and Erica, who made videos of their own giving their side of the story. After so many headlines and public controversies, it looks like Summer is truly over it and started the rollout for a highly anticipated follow-up to her debut, conveniently titled Still Over It. As part of the album's rollout, there was a contest in New York, LA, and Chicago that featured glass boxes with bejeweled hard drives on the inside containing the new album. And only if fans could break these glass boxes would they be be able to access these hard drives. Along with the contest, Summer released a single titled X for a Reason featuring JT of the City Girls, along with a music video and this fun teaser clip of JT and Summer going back and forth on the phone. Girl, you know you crazy. I'm a chill, but you end up in here with me. Then, just a day before the release of Still Over It, Rolling Stone published an article claiming that they obtained a draft of Summer Walker's recording contract, and the details are apparently not the greatest, or at least in Summer's favor. The article alleges that Summer does not own her masters and only receives 16% of royalties on all her music, after getting a $110,000 advance. The other issue is, is that her label, LVNR, also manages Summer, which can create a conflict of interest, as the labels work for their best interests, and the manager is supposed to work on behalf of the artist's best interest. The options on her contract also see her live recordings and non-musical income lower if she were to receive alternative management, although reps from LVNR tweeted out saying Rolling Stone is conspiring with crooks and alleged that they're going to fight this one, so it'll be interesting to see what comes from this. Summer herself hasn't spoke out on these contract allegations, and I mean why would she? Her album is about to come out, this trend is unfortunately far too common in the industry. With the track listing being released, you can expect to hear features from SZA, Ari Lennox, Cardi B, Lil Durk, Omarion, Sierra, and Pharrell. Don't be surprised if you see production from London either, despite the two being on bad terms. I mean, he is credited on X for a reason. But when you consider everything, Summer has been through a lot since her last album, and it makes sense why there is such high expectations. Summer does have a lot of hype behind this project, but when we acknowledge the level of artistry that this woman possesses, I think there's no question that she's gonna deliver. As for where we go from here, well, that's another story for another time and place. After all, this is before they were famous. My name is Clyde Smith, and I'll see you guys in another video.